on this Monday. You know, I'm going to, right here, at the beginning of this week, I'm going to declare something in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to declare that the Western culture is about to change for the good, for the growth and development of the kingdom of God as never before in our history. Now you might say, well, man, Michael Holcomb, why do you say that? Because the Bible has a principle in it. And that principle is that the end of something is better than the beginning. I happen to know that 2,000 years ago, actually 2,500 years ago, that the prophet Daniel had a revelation, had a, 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 a vision, and he saw, well, actually, uh, he interpreted this dream for a king. But he saw it himself, and he saw a stone that was, that was pushed out of a mountainside and came down and crushed all of the other kingdoms of the earth, and that stone grew and filled the whole earth. You see, I happen to have biblical, uh, solid proof that the kingdom of God is not going to it's not going to suffer violence, nor is it going to shrivel and shrink. It's going to fill the earth. And I'm here to tell you something. If, for those of you who think that America's best days are gone, Europe's best days are gone, Britain's best days, Canada, the rest of the world, that Christianity is in a downward spiral, spiral I'm here to tell you something. You have not grabbed hold of what you need to grab hold of. So I want you to grab a hold of this today. Grab a hold of this declaration right now. Because I'm not going to I'm not going to try to paint it any other way. This is a prophetic word I feel that we need to break out with this week as we go into this whole another uh this whole series on on guile and so on and so forth. We need to realize what God's doing in the earth. Now, I, look, I, I know that a lot of people are prophesying gloom and doom. And I, I, I understand that. And, and there's some, there's, there's sort of a, a, a caveat there. The fact of it is, if we don't repent, there are bad things around the corner. Gloom and doom is the case. But I've got news for you. At the same time, at the same time, the same God that is warning is also the God that is promising. The same God that is proclaiming and, and giving a prognosis of healing and restoration and revival and awakening. And, and I'm just going to say this. I believe with all of my heart that there is, and God's slate he has got it planned, he's got it on the schedule, that there is a golden age that we're entering into. In fact, it's not just something down the road. I believe right now something is happening. I know something's happening. And so, I really don't care what the devil's doing. I'm not going to look at that. Friend, if you're listening today and you're a Christian... Now, I know that we've got a lot of people in the audience, and there are some people that are, are tuning in and just considering Christianity, others who are just tuning in just to hear they're not Christians. Uh, but there are those of you who are Christians. Listen, if you're tuning in today, and you're part of the church of Jesus Christ, listen very carefully. Don't concentrate on the devil. Concentrate on Jesus. Stop concentrating on... This is going to smack a lot of people in the face today. But I'm going to say it. Don't concentrate on the Antichrist. Concentrate on the true Christ. The one and only Christ. Jesus of Nazareth. That's our focus. That's our focus. And what I'm going to be presenting to you this week, this whole, this whole uh, teaching, this whole presentation, really, it's a whole plan. Uh, of, of where God is taking us. But this whole thing about guile and guilelessness, this is what God is doing. And and this is what is going to, to change in our society. Now, 
as I mentioned Friday, you know, and this is a big mouthful word, but what we want to talk about guilelessness this week. And for those of you scratching your head and saying, well, what, what's that? We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. We're going we're gonna to define uh, both guilelessness, but we're first going to define what guile is in order to find out what, you know, the good is. we got to sometimes look at what, what is the bad, and, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at what guile is, and then we're going to discover some things about what we're not supposed to do, and then turn around and, re- and with that realization, see very clearly, more clearly, what we're supposed to be doing and walk that way. But I'm here to declare that God is doing something. And if you are wondering about your spiritual development and your spiritual growth, maybe there's some of you today that you've tuned in, and things just don't seem like they're happening. Things just don't seem like they're rolling along. It seems like everything is being drug on and and uh, you know, you're know you looking around and saying, well, where's my spiritual growth? I'm here to tell you something. Get with the picture. Get with the, the, the program, rather. Get with the program because something is happening. And what I'm going to t- be talking about is really the nuts and bolts of what God's doing. Now, why, why do I make that distinction? Why, do, why did I just make that statement? Well, very, very candidly. Very frankly, it's because a lot of us Christians are caught up with stuff that's just that, stuff. And I'm talking about why we go to conferences, the conferences we in fact do go to, the books that we're reading, the the devotionals that we grab a hold of. Some of what we're concentrating on has little or nothing, listen carefully, has little or nothing to do with true revival, and I might even add or, true Christianity, original Christianity. And so God is saying, listen, get with the program. Get with, with what I'm doing. And you know what God's doing? God's getting us back to the basics. See, this is not about making things complicated, nor is it about looking into all the mysteries and all of the, all of the complex, convoluted stuff. The power of Jesus Christ is in the simplicity of the gospel. In the basics, I'm telling you, this is what we need to get back to. So, as we enter into this, realize there is something on the horizon. There's something cooking. And I know that it's cooking, to be honest, it's cooking in my spirit. I mean, I'm I'm realizing, I'm feeling the spirit of God in prayer, folks, like I haven't felt in years. I'm feeling an excitement in my soul. Somebody says, "Well, that's just because you know you're you're starting a church." No, 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 no. no it's it's not, it's not. We're not talking about optimism here. We're not talking about you know the uh, the unexperienced future here. I'm talking about what the Spirit of the Lord is bearing witness with my spirit concerning, and it is that revival is here. In fact, you know what we need to start doing. We need to start saying revival is here. It's right now. What God wants to do is right here and right now. And my friend, maybe you're listening today and you're not a Christian. I want you to know something. Jesus declared it. I'm going to declare it because I know it's true. And that is this, that the kingdom of God or the things of God are right here. They're happening. See, God isn't going away. Jesus is not going away. The Bible is not going away. The baptism in the Holy Ghost, the gifts of the Spirit, are not going away. And if you think for a minute that just because somebody is going to be sitting in the White House who potentially is not a Christian and somehow that's going to hinder the things of God, my friend, I delightfully disagree with you. That's not true. God's kingdom survives even in the harshest of, of, of cultural climates. And we can open up the Bible to see that. But I'm here to tell you, God's going to do something. So let's turn our attention now. I'm, I'm Actually, if, if you, you're in a Bible study, I know some people uh, listen to Bible Days broadcast uh, with a group. If you're in a Bible study today, I want you to grab your Bibles, turn to Psalms chapter 32. And as you're turning there, uh, I just want to say, 
in, by way of introductory that again we're talking about what guilelessness is this is this is huge it's 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 like exploded in my spirit and i know it's going to explode in your spirit because there is power as i've said in the essentials in the simplicity we got to stop running after rainbows. You know, I've decided I'm not running after rainbows anymore. I'm going to just do what God wants me to do because that's where the authority is. That's where the strength is. And so this whole topic about guilelessness or being without guile is absolutely something that when you tap into, you're going to realize how how much the Holy Spirit is is brewing over this thing, brooding over this thing, and that there's an anointing that will come upon your life when you grab a hold of this. So let's turn to Psalms 32 too, and just, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm, I'm definitely going to read uh, the, the parts that are important here. It basically says this, Blessed is the man in whose spirit there is no guile. Now there's other parts to that, but this is still a, a complete thought within this verse. The man who has no guile, the woman who has no guile, is blessed. I want to talk about that a little bit later. But first of all, we got to we got to define something. Guile. We look. We don't really use that word a whole lot. In fact, uh, you know who who knows? Maybe if you're thirty and under, maybe you've never heard of it. I don't know. But but. Um, we need to defile, define <laughs> guile, defile guile. Yeah, let's do that too. Um, but let's define what guile is. Because it's not, well, let me put it this way. It's prevalent. When I, when I started really getting into this and God began to showing me, showing me this, yeah, this is, this is uh, epidemic. That's, that's the, the, um, the seriousness and the rampantness of this. You know, uh, we have a tendency of thinking of sin as, you know, being basically a handful of stuff, depending on what part of the country or, or what country you're from. Uh, you know, uh, where I came from in the East Coast and in, in the United States, I mean, you know, uh, the big sins, you know, it's, of course you had the killing and committing adultery and uh, fornication and smoking, drinking, and, you know, a couple of other things. And we just have these these little, shall we say, um, collection of the big bad sins, the real ones that are going to send you to hell. Fact of it is, this guile that I'm about to talk about is a wickedness that is a cancer in many, many homes, in churches, in society, all over the place, and and it's it is it's rampant. You talk about darkness. You you talk about about uh, the demonic strongholds. This title or this theme, I should say, of guile is it's it. I mean, it's it's we're going to be talking about some dark stuff. I, I, we're not going to get too much into it. We're going to talk a little bit about it. But understand that that what other people, who knows, maybe even you, uh, listening, uh, what people think of as being normal is actually very, very dark. Very, very wicked. And it's not until you step back, step out, by the grace of Jesus Christ, and step back and take a survey that you realize just what kind of slime pit so many people are living in. Um, guile. Now, if you look it up in, in the dictionary, it might say something like this. It's, it's uh, to disguise. It, it means to decoy or trick or bait someone. Uh, uh, someone who has guile or, or, or exercises guile has hidden agendas. Now, again, we're, we're talking about every aspect of life here. I'm not just talking about, you know, out in, out in the, 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 the somewhere in the bad section of town. This is happening right now everywhere in every kind, unfortunately, every kind of 
social outlet. People are operating with hidden agendas. You could say that that um, guile is is well. When you become the victim of guile, that's when you find out how evil and dark it is. So let's put it this way: it's when you find out that someone is is something that they didn't seem to be. When all of a sudden you realize that person that you were dating, they had a hidden agenda. And all of a sudden you're now on the trash can, in the trash can, on the trash heap, and, you know, they've, they've marched along in life. You know, you, you have been used. You know, uh, we could say there's, there's things with, with business, the same thing. Um, and, and um, yeah, and I'm going to be getting into a little bit of this, but even in churches, so you find out that somebody really was putting on a show just because they wanted to use you. And, and really, guile is all about, somebody who exercises guile is all about simply appeasing people. That's it. Just appeasing them in, in order to, if, if not to, to use them, then at least appeasing them without any intention of following through what comes out of their mouth. In other words, we can say that somebody who is filled with guile is somebody who is a truce breaker, a covenant breaker, a promise breaker. See? And and there's there's an aspect of guile that that um as I was studying this and looking at this, I began to realize it's it's related to somebody who's given to change. In other words, in other words, they have allowed themselves, deep down inside, they have allowed themselves the, quote-unquote, luxury, quote-unquote, freedom of escape. In other words, they'll make a promise to you, but deep down inside, they're just as ready to break that promise as keep it. There's, they lack a conviction, listen carefully, they lack a conviction of honesty. See, honesty's got to be a conviction. And you're going to find out later as we get into guilelessness, the opposite of what we're talking about right now, you're going to find out that honesty is one of those things that that uh, God is looking for. One other way I can really sum up guile is, is one word, betrayal. I mean, that actually characterizes what guile really is, betrayal. And this is where we can begin to see this in, as I said, every kind of avenue of our life and of, of, of human lives. And it's not, just, it's not just in one culture, it's everywhere, across the board. This is the sinfulness of mankind. This is one of the proofs, by the way, of the... Uh, theologically speaking, the depravity of man. Or in other words, that, yeah, man is not good. Now, I, I know that some of you might listen to that and say, man, that's, that's kind of harsh. The fact of it is, is until we realize our sinfulness, and what I'm talking about right here, our, our, uh, our fault, that this is who we are, until we come to that realization... We can never be changed. See, the first step to healing is truth. Getting honest with yourself. And the fact of it is, is that there are people that are living in such darkness that they are ready in the heartbeat, it seems, to betray one another. And again, you can, you can see this everywhere. I mean, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is dating. I mean, I, I see this all the time. And unfortunately... In, in our in our Western culture, we've got this thing about dating that's almost like a religious thing. You, you know, you have to, kids have got to start dating, and we got to allow them to date. But can we just can we just step back from the, what's going on with our kids right now, and take a really good look? Can we see what's going on that young people are betraying one another? Girls are betraying boys. Boys are betraying girls. There's broken hearts all over the place. Somebody once said that, that traditional dating just trains us for divorce. 
you know, one day I'm here, I'm flirting with you, and I'm making you feel really nice, and, and you know, I, I, I'm, I'm making all kinds of promises, and I'm saying all, all kinds of sweet things. And the next day, I come to you and say, I don't want to see you anymore. I'm attracted to Sally over here now. See, that is wickedness. This is not fun stuff. And, and it is, it, that's what guile is. Guile is, again, making googly eyes. And when it, we're talking about dating, googly eyes at somebody, you know, you're buttering up one side, down the other, complimenting them, you know, and telling them they're the greatest thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, you break up with them. And it was never in your intention inside, never, to truly stick by your word. See, here's a, let me just say this. Is, now, we're, now that we're on the topic of dating, let me just say this. If you really love somebody, ready for this? If you really love somebody, you're not going to be breaking up with them. If you really care about that person, you're not going to be leading them on. See, that's the other thing about guile. Guile leads people on. Guile monkeys with people and monkeys with their emotions and plays with them just like a toy. This is the thing about promiscuity. This is one of the, the things that's so wrong about fornication. And I mean fornication anywhere. All forms of fornication, including adultery. And it, it, It's wrong because most often it, it always does have some sort and some level of guile in it. You just, just, you're, all you're trying to do is just fulfill your hormonal lusts. That's all you're trying to do. You really don't care about that other person. That's what one night stands are all about. You know, pick up a girl, pick up a guy uh, at the bar. You know, you don't care about them. You know, and so everything you're saying and everything, every impression that you're giving them is a lie. Guile, we can also see this in using friends. For the same purposes, you again, you 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 build up their expectations and hopes, and tell them, hey, you're great, and I'm going to be there for you, and you're making all kinds of, you know, what amounts to covenantal promises. And the drop of the hat, you know, you're stabbing them in the back. I've I've watched this. I've seen some people. I mean, you have too. Literally, one minute. They are in front of somebody's face, smiling and saying, hey, you're the best, you're the greatest, you're the, you know, my BFF. And as soon as that person walks away, I mean, as soon as they walk away, they turn around and start bashing them. See, that's guile. And this is what Jesus Christ is removing. That's why I'm saying this, what we're talking about is so important because we're, we're identifying what God is removing. And some of us need to hear this to identify it in our own life. Here's some of the other ways that we can identify, we can see guile. And, and, and I'm bringing out all this stuff, not just to be negative, but so that you'll see that this, in fact, is, number one, something that's prevalent, but number two, this is something that perhaps we have to change, that perhaps we're personally involved in, and that we need to obey God Turn from this stuff and and go the other way. You know, oftentimes people will hear the word repent and, and they don't know what to repent from. We're identifying this today. This is what we identify with. You know, if I was a dietitian, I would be identifying French fries and, um, uh, you know, uh, fatty foods and sugary cereals and everything else as being the enemy and saying stay away from them. Well, that's what I'm doing today in the spirit. You know, here's, here's guile. Stay away from it. Here's something to stay away from. Stay away from, from uh, you know, lending, uh, getting people to lend you money and then keeping other people hanging as far as the, the repayment or the investment of it. See, that's, that, that's guile. Guile's taking advantage of relatives. And then, and then, and I've seen this. You know, you get them to do you a favor or give you something or let you, you, you use something. And then all of a sudden, when you, you don't replace it or you don't give it back or, 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 or um, you know, there's, there's another expectation involved and you don't meet, meet that expectation, then all of a sudden they turn around and pull the old, you know, uh, card, you know, well, if you really love me, you wouldn't ask for it back. 
Well, if you really care you, you, about me, you wouldn't care what I do with your money. You wouldn't care what I do about your car, your business, your property, and all that. See, that's guile. And it's everywhere. And folks, the fact of it is, is that this is wrong. This is the type of thing that God is going to put a stop to and that he's saying right now, I want this to stop. You know, we can, we can see this in business, people making promises. I've got a story for you tomorrow that just is unbelievable. I mean, but, it's, but this is the thing I'm talking about. It's everywhere, and it's got to stop. See, the fact of it is, is that something is happening. Something's going on in this in the spirit, and, and this is what I'm sensing and feeling, and that is that God is putting his finger on these things in order to eradicate them. It's time that the church of Jesus Christ stop being ignorant and speaking ignorantly. Now, what do I mean by that? I don't mean dis, this in being disrespectful, by the way. I'm not trying to be disrespectful today. But what do I mean by that? I mean that here we are, we're running around and we're talking about revival. We're talking about God moving by His power. We're talking about an awakening. We're talking about great things happening and everything else. And yet, it's left there. There's an ambiguity of, of what, does that, what does that mean? What, is, what does revival look like? What does the move of God look like right here? When we stop this kind of stuff... This is what God is telling us to repent from. This is what the Lord says, turn away from. Turn away from these habits. Turn away from these, this type of treatment of people. Stop trying to bait people. You know, some of us are so ingrained in that, we, we can't even stop. But that's why Jesus is here. Well, you heard it from the pastor. Um, guile is... You know, it's a liar, it's a deceiver, it's a backstabber, it's a it's a person who looks you in the eye and, you know, gives you a wink and acts all sweet and nice, but they're the person who's trying to get you fired, they're the person who's getting ready to stab you in the back, they're the person who's got evil plotted against you. And I can relate to this, you know, I've definitely had guile in my heart at times in my life, and... You know, these are not Christian traits. These are not good things. These are not... I mean, this is what we're trained to... to this is what we uh, eat and breathe and, and drink every day on television. Uh, an eye for an eye. Pay them back. Give them what for. I just watched a video on YouTube on, you know, a guy who, you know, told his girlfriend or fiance, you know, that she had a surprise coming and he had given her like a little book to fold through and and she's blindfolded and she's sitting there folding through the cards and each one says something more elaborate like uh, you know, basically uh, you know, he caught his girlfriend cheating or his fiance and his best friend um, came clean and said, hey, listen, to man, look, uh, I've been sleeping with your uh, fiancé, and, you know, I just, I need to come clean and tell you. Um, and, of course, she never came clean. So this guy has set up the scenario where he's surprising her. Well, the surprise was he had his best friend show up um, while she's blindfolded, um, and her best friend, uh, which was his girlfriend at the time. So, um, I guess this guy, you know, told his girlfriend. So somebody came clean, but she never came clean. And she takes the blindfold off and her best friend is right there confronting her, telling her, what a piece of work she is and how our friendship is over. And, uh, you know, he's just the boyfriend. He's just sitting there, you know, he had set this whole thing up and he's just like basically shoveling, you know, just shoveling it into your, into her face. And, 
you know, there was a time where I was um, very happy to see that girl suffer. I was very happy to repay her evil for evil. But, uh, you know, it just, it makes me sick now, just a, the thought of, because I've been cheated on, I've been betrayed, I know what it feels like, and, and as much as it hurts, it's not gonna help you to pay that person back, uh, in any way like that by betraying them, um, you know, what we don't realize is that it was really a blessing, like, that person cheating on you, God was really just giving you a way out of a relationship that you never, never should have been in, and, um, you know, you didn't have to do anything, like, all of the pain and drama in life was going to come showering down on them soon enough, and you didn't have to be evil to watch their life fall apart you could have just let them go and but you know i understand i understand i know how it's how it feels to be to have everything taken away from you and it's a horrible feeling but as bad as that is uh, it just it's you're as bad as them now you know an eye for an eye it makes you just like them so if you really despise evil and you despise the pain that you're going through, you have to be better. You have to be bigger. You have to be the adult. And being an adult means taking one for the team, uh, swallowing your pride, and moving on. And you have to have a strong inner core to do these things. You can't do this stuff. Um, on your own and nine out of ten of you um, you need Jesus for that core and the one of you that doesn't need Jesus well there's gonna come a day when you're gonna find out sadly that you did need Jesus even though you were able to get through life just fine on your own you just don't realize how you were being played manipulated and spiritually run by the devil just because everything in your life seemed to go hunky-dory but a lot of us are just uh, too smart for our own good. And that brain of yours separates you from your heart and your spirit because you think you can do everything on your own. And you think that um, there is no God. You think that you got to where you are because of you. And you don't give any credit to your creator to your genes, to the things that make you who you are, which your parents don't have any control over. You know, you think your parents knew that you were going to be a boy or a girl? They didn't. You think your parents knew that you were going to have blue or brown eyes? They didn't. You think your parents knew if you were going to be smart? They didn't. They didn't know any of that. God knew all that, though. God knew it all. Ugh. <sighs> I'm glad I'm a moron, so it's a little easier to ask for help from God, so, well, <laughs> with that, <laughs> with that stated, that doesn't mean that God can't enlighten me with lots of knowledge and wisdom and help me through a lot of problems that some of you just are not going to be able to make it through, but with that said, don't don't be evil. Don't be full of guile. Don't be bigger. Be better. Thank you, Jesus, for this podcast. Thank you for helping us to see another side of evil for what it is, Father, and to understand the repercussions of that evil. And I ask that you help guide us, Father, in our decision-making and and the choices we make so that we make the right choices, Father, and we follow you and that we seek you and that we ask you every time we have any doubts or any questions or anything we need in life, Father, we come to you. Even we have nothing. We have nothing, no needs at all, Father. You provided everything. We still come to you to thank you, 
to praise you, to worship you, Father. I thank you so much. I ask these things in your holy name, Lord Jesus, my King, my Creator, the Alpha, the Omega, all things to you, Lord Jesus. In your name, I pray. Amen. Friends, brothers, sisters in Christ, God bless you. Stay tuned for the next podcast, the next video, the next, uh, the next blog. All right. I love you guys. See ya. If you enjoy the pictures that I'm posting on these videos, um, you can visit professionalprinting.com uh, or you can call Professional Printing at 757 4 Five four seven nineteen ninety. 1990 um, This picture is printed on uh, six millimeter palette PVC. Um, and very beautiful. And we can print these on any material. So if you're interested, just tell them that Kevin sent you. And, uh, you might be able to get a 10% discount. So, consider that.